This video is brought to you by these YouTube members. Thank you guys so much for your continued support. Hello everyone and welcome to the top 10 humans on Bleach Brave Souls. Now that sentence is really weird to say, since they're all humanoid, but only some characters have the human affiliation, and those are the ones we'll be covering in this top 10. Now keep in mind, everyone plays the game differently and prioritizes different things, so opinions may vary. If yours does, feel free to put your own list in the comments below. With that said, here's mine, let's begin. Now, as I mentioned at the start, we all prioritize different things in this game. I, for one, don't really care that much about PvP. We'll see if the new arena mode changes that, but until then, I did decide to put Chad at number 10. Now, don't get me wrong, you can totally use this character in PvE for autoing, or just in general. He also does pretty well in guild quests, but his bread and butter is PvP. P, since he does have a captain killer, flurry, and poise. In addition to that, his strong attacks 1, 3, and his special can all inflict paralysis, though it's not debilitating. He's also got a damage reduction soul trait, and his strong attack 2 is a boost move with enhancer, increasing his attack, defense, and focus by 33%. Currently, he's one of the very few options that can actually stand up against Jugram, the king of PvP, especially since Chad already starts off with an above average defense. We don't have very many Chads in this game, which is unfortunate, but I am glad that one of the two that we do have is still a decent character. Next up is a character I never imagined would make it into a top 10 list, the original Ginjo. Now this Kugo Ginjo specifically has plagued me throughout the years since he was one of my most summoned characters. And this was actually pretty frustrating, since the character had decent range and speed on his normal attack and great range on his strong attacks but no multipliers. All he had was Bruiser and Berserker at 20% and an additional 30% but only if his health was low, which honestly just felt like kind of a waste. Since at the time this character came out, having a character with great range was pretty rare, but after this character got resurrected, he he greatly improved. All they did was really give him frenzy and a strong tech recharge link of 10% and he went from being one of the most disappointing characters to one of the best resurrected characters in the game since he does have havoc at 20 and he got to keep his berserker letting him deal even more damage with his strong attacks. The frenzy also helps his low stamina damage link since that is now applied twice. I do think we are gonna get a Ginjo for the upcoming Camp for Your Own World round 9 or 10, but I don't believe he's gonna be in this form, so who knows. Either way, I'm really glad they ended up making this character great. Next up is yet another resurrected human, the original Christmas version of Ryuka. Now this character was already good. She had a decent SP as well as frenzy and debilitating burn on everything except for a normal attack. She also had decent range on her strong attacks. Now after resurrection, she did get noticeably better. Not only did her stats increase, leaving her with one of the highest SPs in the game, but she also ended up with one of the best links in the game, getting a strong attack recharge link of 10% to go with her strong attack damage link. And while her strong attacks already had decent range, they improved upon them too, giving her havoc at 20, making her full screen strong attack 3 beyond full screen, and overall improving the range on her other two strong attacks. This makes this Ryuka one of the best resurrected characters in the game, because she's not only a great link, but one of the best humans to use in the game, period. <laughs> now here's the thing with Ryuka. A lot of people like her, and because of that, she's going to be featured in multiple seasonals, which is why we ended up with two Christmas Ryukas back to back. Now while the resurrected Christmas Rukia we just did can in fact deal more damage and does have better range on her strong attack 3, I'd still say that this Ryuka is slightly better. Now the other one does have a higher SP, but not by much. They both have Frenzy, and while the other one does have a plus 20 strong attack damage link, this one has a plus 20 Berserker. Not only that, but she's also got a boosted strong attack recharge link, meaning she can use her attacks more frequently. Now this Ryuka does not have Havoc at 20, but even so, she does have excellent range on her strong attacks, including a full screen strong attack 3, a strong attack 2 that encompasses a wide area in front of her, and a strong attack 1 It's basically just an ice wall. 
It may not deal that much damage, but it hits multiple times and has a good chance of inflicting freeze. And while she can deal debilitating freeze on all of her attacks, she is extremely likely to do it against Heart Hollows, since she has an ability that increases the chance of her inflicting freeze to Heart Hollows by 10%, officially making her their worst nightmare. Now I won't lie, it is kind of a toss up whether you want to freeze enemies or burn them. Both the Rirukas I've showed so far are exceptional characters. Next up on the list is Aura, a character who, I won't lie, was a bit of a disappointment to me personally, only because I was expecting her to be a bit less generic than she was. Still, generic or not, she is a great character. She's got a really high SP as well as Frenzy, Berserker at 20, a strong attack recharge link, and Havoc at 20, meaning she not only deals a ton of damage with her strong attacks, but they also have great range too, and they can all inflict debilitating weakening. They're also very likely to inflict this weakening, since her strong attack too is a crawling vortex move, and because she has Havoc at 20, it can gather a large number of enemies together. Her Strong Attack 1 is similar to Ryuka's before her, where it's a giant wall that can inflict weakening since it hits so many times, though each individual hit doesn't do that much damage. Still, since she can inflict weakening, if an enemy is weakened, they're gonna be taking more damage. Aura also has Guard Break, so all of her attacks will always deal the max number of damage if they hit. Truth be told, she is not the fastest character, by any means. She is an excellent boss killer though, and a good source to weaken in guild quests. Next on the list we have Ryuken, the Thousand Year Blood War version. He may be a Quincy, but he is also a human. He's got a really high SP as well as Frenzy, Bruiser at 40, Berserker at 60, a boosted strong attack recharge link, and Havoc at 20. Meaning he can not only deal a ton of damage with his strong attacks, but he could also use them frequently. In addition to that, it also means he can deal a decent amount of damage with his normal attack. Now thanks to that Havoc, his strong attacks are going to have great range. His strong attack 3 is beyond full screen, and his strong attack 1 is a beam shot with excellent range. But it's his strong attack 2 that I really want to talk about, because it has a 160 mag, meaning it has potential for a massive amount of damage. I do say potential though, because he you do have to be up close to the enemies, and this attack does tend to push him back, so it's best to pin them against the wall, or paralyze them or freeze them first. The advantage here is that he does have Havoc at 20, so the window of decent damage is increased. The disadvantage though, is that he is primarily a ranged character, so you never really want to be that close, and you kinda have to to get the most out of this attack. The good news though, is that you never have to worry about enemies being range resistant, since Ryuken ignores that, and it means that you can use them in areas that are melee only. I know it took a long time to get a second Ryuken in this game, but personally I really like the character and hope it's not the last time we see him. Oh look, another Ryuka. Caleb seems to really like her, like there's so many seasonals of her. Personally, I'm not the biggest fan of Ryuka. That said, I am a really big fan of her designs in this game. I love all of them, and the Machine Society version is by far my favorite. It's also by far the most useful in this game. She has a really high attack, as well as Bruiser at 20, Flurry, and Poise, meaning her normal attacks not only hit hard, but also hit twice. And she doesn't stagger when hit, and even if she is hit, she's not gonna take that much damage, thanks to her damage reduction soul trait of 16%. This makes her an excellent choice for autoing or in PvP, though she does have a hollow killer and that doesn't come up as much there. Still, she is a really good character. All of her attacks have a chance to inflict debilitating weakening, and she is pretty likely to do it despite being a normal attacking character. As I said, her normal attack does hit twice, so that's double the opportunity there. But her strong attacks are basically built for inflicting weakening. Her strong attack 2 is a vortex move that surrounds her, and her strong attack 3 is a hybrid vortex move that gathers enemies in one spot before hitting them one final time. It hits an above average number of times for a strong attack, and it puts everyone in one spot her deal massive damage to a lot of enemies at once. Finally, there's the fact that she's one of five characters that increases the amount of Link Slot potions you get after Inheritance Zones, making her insanely valuable. And unlike some of those characters, she's got a really high survivability rate due to her abilities and stats. She's honestly a very versatile character, and one that should be coming back again pretty soon. <laughs> Thank you. 
Next on the list, we have the Orient Society version of Orihime. Now, I definitely didn't see this seasonal coming. I was expecting Parasol part blah blah blah, but it was a happy surprise. I really like all the characters in it, and they're all really strong. Orihime has a really high attack, as well as Bruiser at 30, Flirty, and Poise, meaning she can deal a ton of damage, even more than Riruka, assuming they're not weakened. But it gets better. Her strong attack too is a boost move with Enhancer, and this increases her attack, defense, and focus by 33%, letting her deal a lot more damage. Orihime can also inflict debilitating laceration with the rest of her attacks, including her normal attack, and any enemy that is lacerated gets hit with 40% extra damage. And assuming it's with her normal attack, that increase also gets flurry making her normal attacks potentially some of the hardest hitting in the entire game. Not to mention, if an enemy is lacerated, they'll be taking damage from that. Now in addition to being a boost move, that strong attack 2 is also a hybrid vortex move that gathers enemies in one spot before hitting them one final time. It's useful for gathering enemies, obviously, but it can also deal a decent amount of damage thanks to her having Berserker at 40. She also has a very useful strong attack in her strong attack 1, since it is a pushback move that hits multiple times and is very likely to inflict laceration. To be honest, she is one of my favorite seasonal characters to date, and I'm excited to see what else they do with the Orient Society. Next on the list is the most recent human, the new Fierce Battle version of Uryu. Now let's be honest, this version of Uryu definitely needed a remake. He's the one we get for most of the show, and he has no good representation in game. That is at least until now, because this guy is really good. He's got a really high SP as well as Frenzy and Berserker at 40, meaning his strong attacks are gonna deal a massive amount of damage. He's also got a strong attack recharge link, so he's able to spam them, and he has guard break and the ability to hit hidden enemies, meaning there is no guarding from him or hiding from him. He's always gonna deal the max amount of damage, which pairs really well with his strong attacks since they all have great range. He doesn't have Havoc, but his strong attack 3 is still full screen and his strong attack 2 still encompasses a wide area in front of him, as well as his strong attack 1. This combined with his other abilities make him a really fast character, and one that we definitely needed. <laughs> はい。now finally at number one we have Masaki Kurosaki just a fun name to say. Now Masaki has a really high attack, as well as a plus 20 nat link and a ridiculous plus 60 bruiser. This means that her overall damage is increased by 80% and then doubled because she has flurry. This effectively makes Masaki's normal attack the hardest hitting consistent normal attack in the game. And it can actually get even better because her strong attack 2 is a boost move with enhancer, meaning her attack stat now goes up by 33% and it can deal even more damage. In addition to that, this move is also a barrier move, which protects Masaki from incoming damage, which which honestly is pretty unlikely, since given her ridiculous attack, she's likely to take out an enemy before they're able to attack her. And you may be saying, but an enemy can guard or be hidden underground. And while that is true, it doesn't really matter with her, since she has guard break and the ability to hit hidden enemies. To put it simply, if her attack is high enough, nothing can stop her except of course enemies that are range resistant. Now in an event that an enemy does get up near her, she does have poise, so she can attack them while they're attacking her. In other words, that enemy won't last long. On top of all this, Mosaki also has a plus 50 berserker, so her strong attacks also deal a decent amount of damage, and she's completely immune to being frozen meaning the only real way to stop her would be to either take her out or paralyze her. But good luck getting near her. Then you have to hope the barrier is inactive, and you're better off just giving up. All of this make Masaki one of the best characters in the game, as well as the best character to auto win. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, hit like and subscribe to the channel, and stay tuned for some more top 10 lists.